Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. And what I wanted to do today was in response, or let me add in to what Dan Barnes did in his video on how he got cut doing Jiu Jitsu. And one thing he'd mentioned was proper goal setting. As he had mentioned, he's uh, a goal setter. So he's always setting little goals for himself. One of the goals that he mentioned about two or three times in there, which is, it's as you know from my videos, is not really a proper goal, is the blue belt. And, and I get what he's doing. He's not actually saying, you know, it's my goal to, to get a blue belt. Or maybe he is. It, it's something that he'd like to achieve at some point. All right. And he, he mentioned short-term goals, and then you have longer-term goals. So jujitsu is full of short-term goals, and I want to go over with you how to properly set your goals. So first, when setting goals, in fact, let me go over to the board. First, when setting goals for jujitsu, it's just like setting goals for anything else in life. You need to be realistic, right? Realistic is the most important thing. So I, as an example, you're not going to set a goal for, I want to be the best in the world. Right now, you might say, well, no, anybody can be the best in the world. No, everybody can't be the best in the world. Um, that's not a realistic goal. Now, if along your journey, you develop into the best in the world, then, or you have a shot at it, then yes. But at the very beginning, that goal is a little too far out. So if you imagine, all right, so you can see my artist skills here. Four legs, right? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's an elephant. I know it doesn't look like an elephant, but it's an elephant. <laughs> you hear my wife laughing. <laughs> so, what is the rule for eating an elephant? Do you just, you know, given how small I am, Do I just take one big chunk and just eat the elephant in one gulp? No, of course not. What you do is you eat the elephant one bite at a time, right? You eat a little bit here, 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 and eventually, over the course of years, you end up eating the entire elephant. So the second characteristic of your goals is that they need to be short-term. Primarily, and obviously, long-term, secondarily. So what you want to do is you want to have goals that you set for today, for next week, for next month, for the end of the year, and then for one, three, five, ten years from now, for instance. And a very important thing you need to do is to write them down. Because if you don't write them down, then you won't know what your goals are because your goals may be, to, may be one thing today and they may be something else tomorrow. And you may have established those new goals without achieving your first goals. If you write them down, you can check them off. So for me at least, I always have goals to put good videos up for you. But a lot of times I don't have enough topics that interest me to do them. So what I'll do is I'll jot down the ones that interest me and when I do have the time or the inclination to do it, I'll go and do the video. But it's a goal of mine to get those videos down. Another thing is it's a goal of mine to do between one and three videos a week. It just kind of depends on my time. And, but I do want to have a, a, um, a video out for you at least once a week. So that's really the, the types of goals I may have for this YouTube channel. I mean, another goal would be for us to hit 10,000 viewers, which right now, as of this moment, we're at about 9,300, so we're getting pretty close. And, oh, speaking of which, um, we've got something in store for you if and when we hit 10,000 subscribers. So if you want, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that we can get closer to that goal so we can uh, give out that little surprise to you guys. Anyway, so you have to be realistic, meaning you have to be something that you can actually achieve. Um, it has to be short term and then you have to have your long term goals. You need to write them down. Now, what's an example of a goal to have when you're training? So a short term goal would be something as simple as today I'm going to 
let's say John is a big dude and you're not. And let's say every time John gets cross-eyed on me, I end up tapping, right? So my goal for today will be when John gets cross-eyed on me, I'm not gonna tap for 10 seconds, right? So really think about it. You know, if you, were, if you, were, if you had to hold your breath and you couldn't breathe because he's so heavy on you and you can't breathe for 10 seconds, are you gonna die? Nah, 10 seconds is easy, right? But a lot of times you get smashed under John and you go, uh, and you tap, right? So no, don't do that, okay? What I want you to do first is make sure your hands are in the right spot for your escape. So whether your, your professor has you escape with your hands here, over here, over there, it doesn't matter. But put your hands in the right spot, and once you're in the right spot, I want you to try to escape. And while you're trying to escape, you think to yourself, okay, I set a goal for myself today of not tapping for at least 10 seconds. So you're gonna go and you count in your head, 1,001, 1,002, while you're trying to escape, 1,003, 1,004, right? When you get to 10 and you're dying and you cannot handle anymore, then you tap. Goal achieved. You can either set your next goal immediately and say, when John and I train again, I'm not gonna tap for 11 seconds, right? So eventually you get to the point where you'll be able to withstand the pressure for two minutes. But it all started with your first 10 second goal and the 11 second goal, right? So what you need to do is you need to give yourself these achievable goals. You can't just say today, I'm gonna be able to, to withstand John's pressure, you know, knowing that I can't escape, I'm gonna be able to withstand the pressure for two minutes, when you've never done more than eight seconds, right? So give yourself some realistic goals. And let's say you fail and you don't hit the 10, you get to nine and you do it three times, nine seconds, oh man. Go back home and write that thing down. Or do as I do, I just use Google Keep, which is you know, one of the applications within Google's suite of apps. And I just go ahead and jot it down in there. So I'll just put short-term goals and I'll put be able to withstand John's pressure for 10 seconds. You can even ask him, ask him to help you out, right? He may be willing to help you. you know, he may tell you, man, you gotta figure out how to get out of this thing. Well, yeah, I can't, it's hard, okay? So, just so he goes on top of you and you just try and you tap okay i had enough he continues to help you to get to the point where he's trying to help you to try to figure out how you can learn to withstand the pressure a lot of it just has to do with believe it or not finding the little small space that you can move your body into to get yourself that breathing room and one thing dave mentions it's it's a hickson concept and it's called getting into the middle finding the middle because on the one hand you're smashed and you're ready to die and you tap. On the other hand, you're out. So what you need to do is you need to find that place in the middle that's halfway over to getting out, but a lot of times that, little, that, that one spot is not a matter of simply just moving yourself and just getting here, for instance, right? It could be something as easy as shifting your hip a tiny bit, or as we like to call in the studio, preloading your hip. Because even though your opponent is on you and smashing you, he cannot lock you down 100%. You may still have 5% of wiggle room for that hip, so put your hip in that 5% spot and move it, right? And if that's something that you don't know how to do, then you need to set as your goal to figure out how to do it from every position that you're under, whether it be uh, mount, whether it be side mount, whether it be cross side, whether it be anything. Make yourself a goal to find the middle for every position. So realistic, Short term, long term, write them down. Now, notice I haven't even mentioned the belts yet, right? And the reason is because the belt is not the goal. The belt is just simply recognition for goals that you have achieved. And then what it does is it then gives you a new set of goals that you need to make. So when you get from white to blue belt, you get your blue belt. That's one level you already hit, you've already hit. Now you need to set new goals. The goals now need to be purple belt centric, right? And once you hit your purple belt, you need to set new goals. And I, I also have some videos that would kind of go over with you what you need to do and think about once you hit a certain belt. I think I've done them all. So, so just go ahead and check those videos out, videos out when you have time. Another thing you need to do is you need to also tell yourself with regard to jujitsu, you know, number one would be pressure, be able to withstand the pressure. Number two is you need to think to yourself, I need to set a goal for being able to maintain my calm. Because one of the things that people never do is they never maintain their calm unless they're very experienced. And I say maintain their calm is that let's say you and another partner, you're just thinking to yourself, let's just do a casual role, right? So, um, you know, what's the, what's the common expression? We don't say it in our studio, but it's, bro, you wanna do flow rolling? 
right? So what does that mean? You know, the assumption is that you're just gonna kind of move, you're gonna flow, you're gonna go from one position to the next, you get stuck, you get stuck, but you're gonna move, your opponent's gonna lighten up and let you out. Well, what always happens is while you're flow rolling, somebody decides to pick it up. They pick up the pace, and because they pick up the pace, you pick up the pace. Now guess what? When flow rolling, the one who usually picks up the pace is the one who is either not as good, meaning the lower belt, or the one who is in better shape. Uh, the one who's in better shape, if he's not doing as well, may start to pick up the speed a little bit, right? Because he realizes, you know, usually as a lower belt does, he realizes that he can't beat you by simply flowing and rolling into various positions and going for stuff, right? He's realizing that every time he moves or you let him move, he's hitting a block wall. He's not the boom, and boom, he's stuck, he's stuck, he's stuck, he's stuck. So what they inevitably do is they then try to pick it up and go faster to try to beat you, right? So your goal, let's say you're the one who is perhaps the better one, and these guys are always picking it up on you, and because maybe you're not in as great a shape, or maybe you're older, or maybe you're lighter, you try to pick up the pace to keep up with them, and then you end up losing, even though you should be better. Your goal for that would be Try to remain calm, let him move any way he wants, learn to connect with him so wherever he moves, he takes you with him, rather than you don't connect with him and he moves here, moves there, and moves everywhere and you can't go. Whereas if you're connected, when he moves, you move. When he moves, you move, right? It's because he's, gonna, he's basically taking you with him. You know, you're, you're, you're hooking onto a moving vehicle and he's just pulling you along for the ride. That's um, one of the ways that you connect. So now, now that we've done our goals, now that we've written them, written them down, we need to put them in a place where we see them regularly. So like I said, I use Google Keep, but for some people it may be as simple as just writing it on a, on a sheet of paper and putting it on a mirror in your bathroom that you see every day. Um, I've tried stuff like that where, I, where I'm looking at it and I just so happen to look, what, what I end up doing is I end up tuning it out. It ends up being any object that I may have in any given place. Whenever you walk into a certain place, you don't see everything that's there. You only see stuff that you key into, right? Stuff that you, you look at and you, and you focus on. What you need to do, at least what, for me, was if I put something on my desk, I'd look at it and I'd look right past it. I'd get used to seeing it there. I know it's there, so I no longer pay attention to it. That's me, right? On the other hand, if I'm putting it in my Google Keep, I'm actually gonna pull, my, pull, it, pull it up every day. And, I'm gonna, and when I physically pull it up and I'm looking at it, then I'm paying attention to it. But if I just have it posted somewhere, I'll, I'll just walk right by because I know it's there. It becomes something that is always in the, in the background there. And you end up being desensitized to it and you end up not paying attention to it. Set your goals realistically so you can achieve them. Short term, long term, write them down and write them down in a spot that you will consciously go to every day to look at. So hopefully that kind of gives you an insight on how how I think on setting goals and what I'll also do with a lot of my members. You know, I give them goals to do. Let's say a goal may be today and for the next month. I want you to only play left-handed for the entire month. So their goal is to play left-handed. Now me as their coach, if I see them playing right-handed, I'll just stop and I'll yell, John, are you playing left-handed or right-handed? Oh, oh, sorry coach, sorry coach. And then they go and play left-handed, right? So that's just me reminding them and as Dan says, uh, in his video, keeping them accountable to the goal, right? And, it, and that's a goal that I set for them, right? It's, it's something that they cannot do, play left-handed. It's something that's done for a good enough amount of time, one month, that allows them to develop that skill. But it's not so long as to make it to where they don't develop any further in other things, right? But playing left-handed, that's easy, right? Or if you're left-handed, making them play right-handed, right? Or one thing that people like to always do is um, that I, I usually don't do, it's have somebody play from their back. Well, because it's easy to lay on your back, so everybody's wanna play from the back. But for a big guy, I will do that, because big guys always wanna play on top. So if you're a big strong guy, and a big athletic guy, you wanna make as your goal to learn how to play the bottom, because there's always gonna be somebody bigger, better, faster than you. And if you're always the one being the hammer, and you're never the nail, then you never learn how to be a nail that doesn't get hammered down. Those are goals, goal setting examples that I will have for my students or that you should have for yourself. Now, here's a common one, and you know, Dan, Dan, Dan's video did kind of highlight one of the benefits of jujitsu, and it's getting yourself in shape. Now, for him, he didn't have a goal of losing weight because he was already a thin guy. He was in shape, marathon runner type, right? 
But for him, I don't know if he had any physical body, physical body goals, right? But he just ended up taking, he, would, he got into the habit of taking a picture of him once a month, back from when he did Body for Life, uh, he did the Body for Life Challenge. And he just got into that habit and he, he just kept doing it. So it just kind of happened. And he happened to notice the difference. Hey, look at me in January versus look at me in July, right? Mm, that's quite a difference. A lot of people need to set goals with regard to, especially in, 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 uh, in our school where, you know, our demographic tends to be about the 40 year old professional. Most of them have had um, all these years out of high school, right? 20, 25 years out of high school. And every year that goes by, they gain one to two pounds. So what happens? You're 160 pounds out of, you know, right out of high school and here you are, 20 years later and you're 210 pounds. Maybe your perfect weight is about 180, but it's certainly not 210. So the goal would be, you know, you could just set a goal and say, I wanna lose weight. Well, no, that's not quite the way to do that. You need to set a goal of doing things that will end up making you lose weight. So you need to be able to finish the warm up, right? That's the first thing. Another thing is to finish the warm up, but do it at an intense level. Another thing would be to be able to do push-ups, let's say those push-ups with your, with your hands fully extended, your belly down, but your hands are fully out and your feet are fully out and you just lift up. I don't know what they call them, um, but they're super hard to do, right? Or let's say your goal would be to be able to go through an entire class um, without stopping, you know, sitting off of the mat to rest, if that's what you do, right? Um, another goal could be you need to get your eating in order right maybe you're you're drinking a lot of alcohol right and you're not drinking whiskey which is keto right you're drinking a lot of beer let's say you drink a lot of beer and you're, you're still having trouble cutting weight well make that one little change and see what happens instead of drinking four beers a day drink two right cut your beers in half or let's say you have to eat bread with every meal or you know me growing up in hawaii it was rice with every meal cut that in half so instead of eating half of your plate with rice eat only one quarter of your plate with rice just making little changes like that. And then what you'll see is by you making those changes in your life, you know, let's say you smoke, you, know, you gotta quit smoking. Uh, you know, let's say you drink a lot of soda, you cut the soda out. You know, it's hard to cut the soda out completely. So what you could do is um, when you go to the, you know, go to the restaurant or whatever and just have them fill the cup completely with ice so you don't have as much soda. You know, little things like that will make a huge difference in your weight. And then what'll happen is you'll see that as, as, as the months progress, you will have lost weight. You could even do, you know, I have in the, in the store, in the store, in the studio, I have uh, body fat calipers that people can use. You can just go ahead and measure your body fat calipers, uh, body fat with the calipers, and you can just jot them down, you know, put them in Google Keep again. And, you know, by doing those life changes, the weight will take care of itself, right? And weight is really not necessarily the, the measure that you want to use. You, I think the best way to do it is to use body fat, body fat percentages, and also your clothes, right? If you have a, if you're, as, uh, as Ken had mentioned um, to me today, he was 5'8", and he had a 39 inch waist, and like 230 pounds, right? Now he's down to like maybe a 33 inch waist, I'm not sure, but you know, he lost six inches off his waist. But by doing the right things, he ended up melting a whole lot of fat off his body, and, and it kind of came as a result of all that effort. So anyway, I hope this was something that would kind of help you out in setting realistic goals for yourself. Goals that will not only help you progress in jujitsu, that will also, but will also help you in life. Obviously, if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe. Like I mentioned earlier, we're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. And at 10,000, then uh, Professor Dave and I will have um, something that we'll do that we'll, we'll try to do as a thank you to you guys. Also, be sure to check in our links below if there's anything that you like, um, that you'd like to purpose it, uh, purchase, it'll help the channel out uh, and it's greatly appreciated. And also, if you haven't already, you should consider becoming a member of our Patreon account. We've got over 130 videos on there now and those videos cover a lot of the cool stuff, uh, technically, that we've filmed of Dave doing at various places. And you know, every time, you know, every time we go on a trip, he and I, I always film whatever we've got going on. And it's nothing fancy. It could be my phone, it could be, it could be my, my action camera, whatever. But I film it just so that we have Dave on film teaching something. And then what we do is we send the, inf the footage back to Rusty. Rusty then cuts it up and he puts it up on the Patreon channel. And the stuff that's on there 
will answer a lot of questions a lot of people have, and it will also answer questions that you never knew existed, right? Um, you might have just relegated yourself to thinking, I'll never be able to get out of a cross side from a guy who's 240 pounds and knows how to hold the position, right? You might say, you know, he's just too big for me. You know, there, there are techniques and tricks in there that will help you become more comfortable to get out of this stuff. Now, it's not structured. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, is this structured in a curriculum? No, it's not. That's not the goal of this channel. This, the goal of this channel is simply for us to have um, footage of Dave teaching and have it on there for you to go and check out. Um, at some point in time in the future, we'll look at something that's a little more structured because the demand seems to be there. Uh, but that is something that, you know, it's, it's, it's a long-term goal. Let me kind of put it that way, right? Uh, but we've got a lot of short-term goals that we're trying to achieve, and one of them is trying to get this Patreon channel filled up with a good catalog of videos for you guys to go and check out. So that's all I have for you. If you have any questions, go back into the video and, and kind of go over the steps on how to set your goals properly. Uh, but you can also go and comment below, and I'd be happy to, when I have some time, go in and, and answer any questions you have. And if you have any topics that you want us to do, go ahead and, uh, and just put them in the comments below or email them us, uh, email those ideas to us uh, via our Facebook page uh, in, a, in, a, in the inbox, you know, send an inbox, so private message, or uh, email us at kamajujitsu at gmail.com. In the meantime, happy training. Bye-bye now.